How we better protect and care for our oceans is one of the biggest questions facing our planet. And some people perceive commercial fishing as a threat to this. How do we get governments and the fishing community to work together to make sure fisheries are well managed and sustainable? One small corner of the globe is providing some fascinating answers. This is the story of the South Georgia Marine Protected Area. South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands are situated in the Southern Ocean, one of the last great wilderness areas on the planet. The South Georgia government established the Marine Protected Area, or MPA, in 2012 to help protect and conserve the region's marine ecosystem, all while allowing limited, sustainable fishing. The MPA is over 1.2 million square kilometres. Over a quarter of its total area, more than the size of the UK, is made up of no-take zones, where all fishing activity is prohibited. These include the most biodiverse regions of the sea floor. Fishing close to land is also prohibited, so as not to interfere with foraging birds and penguins. Particularly sensitive seafloor habitats are protected by these closed areas. Bottom trawling is completely prohibited, and only 6% of the seafloor area is available for fishing, which is restricted to the low-impact bottom long lining. Long line fishing can only be carried out in depths between 700 and 2,250 meters in order to protect both biodiverse habitats and juvenile toothfish. The South Georgia government are determined to hold up their fisheries as an example for the rest of the world. South Georgia has been an exemplar of sustainable fishing for some time. Their Patagonian toothfish fishery was the first of its kind to be certified as sustainable in 2004 by the Marine Stewardship Council, or MSC, who currently rated as the highest scoring toothfish fishery, praising it for its overall management, protection of the ecosystem and its system of governance. Since the MPA was established, the independently calculated total allowable catch, which is the maximum sustainable annual catch, has remained remarkably stable. The limit is determined by an independent body of scientists, but the South Georgia government takes an even more precautionary approach, typically issuing only 90% of the available catch to fishing vessels. But fish stocks are only one important part of the equation. If not well regulated, commercial fishing can have a significant impact on other parts of the ecosystem, principally the seabirds who also fish these waters. The South Georgia government worked with the fishing community to design and implement mitigation measures, including seasonal closures, streamer lines, line waiting regimes, night setting requirements and unique marked hooks. The result? Effective elimination of seabird bycatch in the toothfish fishery. And it's not just seabirds. The South Georgia government adopts an ecosystem approach to management, minimizing interactions with and impacts on other species. They invest over 65% of their fisheries revenue back into marine management, research and protection to ensure a sustainable future for the area. In fact, recent surveys have confirmed that populations of many whale species are on the rise for the first time in over half a century. The South Georgia government are also challenging the fishing community to lead the world in sustainable practices by enforcing strict licensing criteria. Each vessel operating in South Georgia has at least one independent observer on board throughout the entire fishing season. The vessels are also electronically monitored. Every hook set and haul is recorded and CCTV is also present to ensure full compliance with all regulations. The government empowers each vessel to lead the way in best practice and compliance, to be platforms for scientific research and to provide eyes on the water to detect illegal fishing activity. These high standards also extend to providing a safe working environment for all those on board. Some vessel operators have decided to raise the bar on crew safety and working conditions even further by being audited against the latest international labor organization standards for crew welfare, way in excess of industry norms. All in all, it paints an encouraging picture. Through the government and fishing community working together for decades, South Georgia is a rare example 
of an ecosystem in recovery. Through their three-pronged approach to protect the ecosystem, sustain the fish stocks, and inspire fisheries around the world, they're showing what's possible when everyone works together for a common goal.